You wake up again. It's dark, quiet. The room hums with the low breath of night. The clock glows, 3.12 a.m. You stare at it, heart ticking faster than it should. A thought rises before you can stop it. Something's wrong with me. The world is still asleep, you are not. You wonder why your body betrays you each night, peeling you from sleep like a page turned too soon. But what if this is not a betrayal? What if this is exactly what your ancestors did? Long ago, before fluorescent bulbs and alarm clocks, before the idea that sleep must be solid and unbroken, people didn't sleep like we do. They slept in two gentle acts. The first sleep, then a second sleep. And in between, a quiet space, a hush. A natural intermission. So maybe you're not broken. Maybe you're just built like someone from the 1600s. Before the whir of power lines and the glow of street lights, before time was split into shifts and schedules, people slept differently. In much of pre-industrial Europe, the night was not one long stretch of unconsciousness. Sleep came in two parts, first sleep and second sleep. The first began not long after nightfall, around nine or 10 in the evening. It lasted until about one or two in the morning. Then a quiet wakefulness, not panic, not restlessness, just a pause. This period had a name. It was called the watch. It was ordinary, expected, even useful. People prayed, tended to embers in the hearth, checked on children, fed animals, talked quietly, thought gently, Sometimes they simply sat in the dark. And when the body was ready again, it drifted back to sleep. The second sleep would carry them to sunrise. This wasn't fringe behavior. It was recorded in court documents and medical advice. It was mentioned in poetry and letters. It was known by the poor and the privileged alike. It wasn't a problem, it was just how nights worked. In that quiet space between first and second sleep, people didn't lie in fear waiting for rest to return. They lived softly, purposely. Some prayed, believing the hour held a spiritual charge. It was a time of stillness when thoughts could stretch out undisturbed. They spoke to God or simply listened. Some read, if they could, by firelight or the wick of a single candle. They turned the pages slowly. This was a time for personal reflection, not productivity. Others wrote quiet letters, dreams, lists for mourning. No rush, just ink and thought. Couples made love in this hour, not urgently, but sleepily, tender, and unhurried. Farmers checked on animals, mothers tucked in children, fires were fed, embers coaxed, beds adjusted. In many places, it was called the watch, a time believed to be especially open to visitation, to dreams, to ghosts, to insight. It was not a time to be feared. It was a time to be with the night. So what happened? If waking in the night was once normal, expected even, why does it now feel like a flaw? The answer begins with light, not the sun, but light we made, artificial light. First came gas lamps, then electric bulbs. Cities stayed awake longer. Shops extended their hours. 
and slowly the rhythm of the dark was rewritten. Then came factories, loud, demanding, exact. Shift work didn't care for your second sleep. It needed you on time, alert, uniform. And so society built a new kind of night, one sleep, unbroken, a full eight hours, or else something must be wrong with you. It became moralized. Good people got eight hours, healthy people, disciplined people. But this was never about biology. It was about productivity. Psychologist Roger Eckert studied thousands of old texts, legal depositions, diaries, medical journals, and found over 500 references to a first and second sleep. What we think of as normal is simply recent. The eight hour sleep is not natural, it's mechanical. So you wake up again, it's the middle of the night. Your mind begins to race. Why can't I sleep? What's wrong with me? Why does this keep happening? But pause, what if your body is simply remembering? This hour, this strange dark middle may not be a mistake, it may be memory. The memory of thousands of nights before this one, of ancestors who woke and waited, listened and reflected, tended fires and whispered prayers. Your body might not be broken, it might be ancient. So if you wake, don't fight it. Sit up slowly, stretch. Let the silence wrap around you like a shawl. Breathe, write a gentle thought. One sentence is enough. Sip water, read a line of something slow. Listen to something warm, a voice, a breeze, a quiet night storm. You're not out of sleep, you're between it. And the second sleep, it's waiting for you like it always has. If you work a regular nine to five job, segmented sleep might seem impossible, but it can be gently invited back in. Start by going to bed earlier, around 9.30 or 10. Let yourself wake naturally after three to four hours. Don't panic, don't reach for your phone. Instead, set the tone of your wakeful hour. Keep the lighting dim or use candlelight. Write in a journal or read something slow and printed. Avoid screens and stimulation. Keep your body warm and comfortable. Then, when sleepiness returns, which it will, go back to bed for your second sleep. Even if the second sleep is only 90 minutes, it may feel deeper and more refreshing than hours of restless tossing. You don't have to live in the 1600s to sleep like someone who did. You are not failing at sleep. You are remembering something old. You are part of a long, quiet story, one that unfolds in two chapters with a breath in between. The world may have changed, brightened, rushed, rearranged, but your body still knows the moon. It still listens for the hush of the watch. It still stirs when the night is deepest. It still waits to rest again. So if you're awake, be awake softly. And when it comes, let the second sleep find you. No need to chase it. It already knows the way. Close your eyes. Let the dark do its work. It always has. If this idea of two sleeps is new to you, you're not alone. 
It disappeared quietly, almost without a trace, but it's been rediscovered in the pages of old books, diaries, and research. If you'd like to explore more, here are a few places to begin. Historian Roger Eckert's work, especially his book, At Day's Close, Night in Times Past, he uncovered over 500 historical references to segmented sleep. Scientific American has published pieces on biphasic sleep and its possible return. You'll find articles by researchers and psychologists who are rethinking what's normal. Sleep medicine specialists like Dr. Thomas Ware have documented segmented sleep patterns in modern experiments too. In total darkness, subjects naturally drifted into two distinct phases. So if you find yourself awake in the middle of the night, maybe you're not in crisis, maybe you're in history.